Many are saying that Utah is going to ditch the Big 12 for the Big 10. And by many, I mean like seven people who are completely and utterly wrong. This is a Locked On Big 12, Locked On Utes crossover. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Big 12, everybody. I'm Drake Toll from ESPN Central Texas. That's JT Worcestershire Sauce or Worcester Sill. There's just a lot of consonants going on. And this is a Locked On Big 12, Locked On Utes crossover. Thanks for making our shows your first listen every single day. JT, I love how confused you were when I brought this up to you. I have had Utah fans. But by the way, I'm back. They can never get rid of me. I, no matter how much they might despise they keep me. You down. They can never get rid of me. I've had Utah fans either on Twitter or on in, in YouTube comments, which I don't always read who seem to believe that Utah has bigger or better expansion goals past the Big 12 and even to a league like the Big 10. What do you make of this here rumor? Do you know what this is? This is a hat. Do you know what the other word for it is? <laughs> well, Santa hat, cap, cap, cap. cap? Yes. So, yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly what that is. This is not happening. Utah. Look, I was someone who very much so wanted the Pac-12 to stay together just because I was a traditionalist. I liked things the way they were five power, five conferences. I loved all of that. Once it became clear that was not a case scenario, Utah got to get into the Big 12. I thought it was a good deal for both conferences. You know, if you're the Big yeah. 12, you get a team like Utah and who has won, yes. had won back-to-back Pac-12 championships. Still hurts that I don't get to say that anymore, but had won two of the final three in the pack. And then also, that's what you're getting with Utah. But then if you're from Utah's perspective, you get to still be in a Power 4 conference, which teams like Oregon State and Washington State, they can't say that at the moment, obviously. Mm-hmm. So that's where I think this really benefited both sides. This is a really good conference with a lot of teams with strong traditions. Now, I think a couple of programs like a Baylor and you know a couple other ones too like a TCU they're like a down year for sure but they have the potential to get back in and be in the thick of that 12 team playoff there's teams with a winning tradition and history where I do think Utah should be happy to be there would any school any school would have wanted to get into the Big Ten or the SEC right like no matter what we all think the future of college football will look like those are the two that seems like they will be there no matter what happens but the Big 12 seems like it's in a very strong position. You have to give a lot of credit to Commissioner Yormarker for what he's been able to do in his aggressive expansion tactics. And I do think that Utah should be happy where they are. I thought there was a time where Utah would have a chance to get into the Big 10 if we were doing super conferences in the future. But Uh-oh. even that as of Uh-oh. now, like, like big, big, su- I'm talking big super conference. I'm yeah. not talking about they get, they expand by five teams and then Utah finds themselves in there. I'm talking a big super conference type thing. But even that, the more it just feels like that Utah will be in the Big 12 for the long term. And I think Utah fans should be excited about that. Whoa. Wait a second, JT. This is the place that I can see where these crazy Utah fans could derive this because yes. Kyle Whittingham has mentioned that, yes. oh, well, maybe we won't be playing them or maybe we'll be playing them or them or who knows because he, you know, crazy Uncle Kyle, I'm not, I'm not afraid to call him that, says things sometimes that are a little crazy. And you've, you've heard him bring up vernacular that sounds like his belief is expansion is going to continue somewhere. And maybe yeah. that's where these fans are deriving the Big Ten rumors. Do you think that might be a source of this, Kyle Whittingham's unsure approach to expansion? 1000% when asked to be like you said, when asked about this in the past, he's always been one who has said like, well, that's where we are right now, rather than being like, Oh, I'm looking forward to the future. He's always said, this is where we are. Like I think he's, and he's one of who said that we're headed for super conferences. I mm-hmm. still think that's extremely likely. He's I right. Just, I don't know. He's right. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I because this is where like, but how big are the super conferences? I think that's where I still think we're going to end up with super conferences. But are they going to be exclusive to the Florida states of the world or are they going to be exclusive yeah. to even or are they going to be inclusive to even more of the teams like that? That's where it seems a little bit murkier as more things come out about some schools being unhappy and how much these big conferences really want to continue to add programs for the TV money and revenue reasons that have gotten so wonky and hard to follow. But, yeah, I got to believe that's a big reason of where the rumor comes from is because you do have the coach of Utah 
who is more, you know, Kyle is obviously on the longer end of coaches who've been around for a while. Yes. I'm not sure how much he loves the craziness that is conference realignment. So in some ways that is his get off my lawn answer of like, well, that's just right now where we actually are. And I love mm-hmm. Kyle, but he's also someone who tends to do this with the media at times, whether it is not exactly saying verbatim how things actually should be perceived because he's a college coach. All college coaches are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and when and when you factor him in the conference realignment, especially, I think that's where he just gets sick of it sometimes. And he's just like, well, that's just where we are right now. But yeah, it's so I think though him saying that definitely fuels these type of rumors. But I, I still would be surprised if Utah's changing conferences in the next couple of seasons. With that, the 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 staying power of the Big Twelve and Utah being a Big Twelve team long term, are you happy with that? Because I know there are some Utah fans, mm-hmm. and you and I mentioned off air, there are the ten percent of every fan base who sucks. Every fan base just has the group who isn't very fun to talk to, and in Utah's case, they're usually pretty loud on social media, and that's that's a burden that the rest of the normal fans have to bear. Most Utah fans, large majority, are very nice and kind. Is the fan base on the whole excited to be in the Big Twelve? I think the fan base on the whole will. I think they are excited. I, this is where it gets tough because, like you said, there is a really loud. The easy answer was yes. The easy answer know, was yes. I know. I just. I think there is a large portion still right now that are still, like, there just hasn't been a ton of talk about. I think. I feel like yet amongst the fa- at least from what I've seen, like, mm-hmm. there's been some talk about the Big Twelve, but so much of it is still like, let's land this player in the portal. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's get that. Yeah. Like, that's what so much of it is wrapped around right now. I do believe once we turn our attention toward next year, even more. Then you will see people get more excited. I think people are still like some did. Yes, some were disillusioned by the big 10 getting in there right away. Some are still like, like I said, I think some of myself are still like, dang, it's just a bummer. The Pac-12 fell apart. But I think overall people should be excited. As I mentioned, this is a really quality conference. If you have a 10 and one record, do all those things, go undefeated. Like you will be a top four team in college football because this is still a bunch of quality power five teams that you're beating in order to get in. So that's where I think people should still be very much so excited about the opportunity to be playing in the Big 12. They should be be thankful and glad that they are in a conference like that. I don't think Utah was really in danger of getting left behind because of yeah. those yeah. Pac-12 championships as I kind of highlighted, but it, it still got a little close at the end with them being one of the last, last ones on the lifeboat, technically. So that's why I think it does make it interesting, but this is an exciting opportunity for Utah, and I do believe the more we get closer to this season, we see like the full dates of the games revealed. Yes. I, I do think there will be more excitement. I think when the schedule came out, there was a lot of initial excitement, I should say. I just think right now it's dominated by, um, you know, everyone wanting so-and-so in the transfer portal or who is leaving your program. That's obviously a big thing every school's dealing with right now. But I do think there's a lot of excitement, as there should be, because Utah's, I think Utah's a chance to have a really good year next year, as we're going to discuss here shortly. And I think in the future that Utah, it's going to be fun to see Utah battle it out with these other programs in still what's going to be a very competitive conference. That I, I hit the nail on the head there with other schools focusing on portal and focusing on recruiting. That is that has been at the forefront. So I don't think Utah fans are necessarily apathetic about the Big 12. Yeah. But as the seasons come to a close, you turn the, the attention to next year and the schedule is released. It is. Oh, shoot. This team is now a Big 12 football team. The, the next time a regular season game, it will be with the Big 12 logo on the jersey. JT, before we get into... When that day comes, how good Utah will be next season. Give me this to close this portion of the conversation. How do you view the stability of the current Big 12? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think it is in a pretty good, I think right this exact moment, I think the big 12 is in a good position. Right. Could I mean, change in the next half hour for sure. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's definitely third right now, which some of the rumors of everything going on with the ACC, you hear about the Florida States. I got to imagine Miami being another one. That's like, Hey, we're, we were a big brand. So we deserve to be in this spot, even though Miami based on recency does not deserve to be in that with no. the things they continue to do. I mean, they don't even know when to kneel at the right time. So I don't really think it's fair for them to be yelling somewhat frequently love, like love. that. I really hope some Miami fans listening just so they can catch a stray randomly by tuning it. But yesterday's way, show was about Miami, so they're probably just oh, so there you yeah. go. Yeah, I didn't even know. <laughs> Um, but no, I, yeah, like I said, I do think the big 12 is in a still a pretty solid position. There's lots of, I mean, with coach prime being here, obviously that's a huge storyline and a brand and thing that's going forward. And you have programs like a TCU that still made the national championship game last year. You have teams like Baylor who've done a lot in the past. You have programs like a Texas tech that we think could be trending in an upward direction in the near mm-hmm. future too. Kansas state continues to be a thorn, obviously Oklahoma state every single year as well. So I do feel like the big 12 is still in a pretty solid place overall. They are of course, 
course not the SEC and the Big Ten with the amount of money that's dished out there. But I think Commissioner Yormark has done a great job making sure they are clearly in a solid place in that tier two. Utah is going to win the Big 12 next year. That's what the headline says. That's what the headline says. Let's react to that. Up next on Locked On Big 12, Locked On Utes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is where I go to make money. It's like a passive income. I go and I see, oh, parlay. Look, 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 look. This week, I had Murray State, Eastern Washington, Campbell, Fresno State, Southern Mist, Marist, and Michigan State. Yeah, you know, does that make me maniacal? No, because I can go to FanDuel.com forward slash locked on, put five bucks in one of those teams' money lines. If it hits, I get $150 in bonus bets. Any winning $5 money line bet. Yes, yes, it was on Eastern Washington basketball, but yes, I got $150 bucks if your team wins. You've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time than right now. It's so easy to use. Spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Kick off the NFL season right now. $5 money line bet on anybody this Sunday. FanDuel official partner of the NFL. JT, as it is written right here, Utah will win the Big 12 Conference in football in 2024. React. I love it. I'm so glad you finally jumped on the bandwagon, Drake. I'll, I should add it. I should add it. To <laughs> I should add it to make it sound this way. I, I think it's a really strong probability. Now, I will say Utah's chance. It's actually funny. If we back all the way up before the season started, I was saying at the time that we should temper our expectations about Utah winning the Big 12 in 2024 because I assume Cam Rising was going Wait to play this year. That's the same then- thing that I said, and I got hard for it. <laughs> But you also were talking about a lot of hype about Texas Tech and everything, too. And also, you diss Kyle Whittingham. And that's oh, one thing right. with Utah fans that when you come at their guy, they do they get they get fired. They get fired. But I, I say do raise think- Uncle Kyle one time and everybody yeah, thinks they got to make a big stink about it. You said inconsistencies. Not that I remember, actually. But either I way, anyway, I did. Yeah, you know, you did. You did. This is, I got like, a lot of well, comments. Some, because sometimes he wins the big games and loses the small game. I don't know, JT. Here what, we are he again. New conference championship. I don't know. <laughs> that's not winning a big game. I don't know what it is. Here we are again. All right. Okay, Utah yeah. <laughs> winning the best. Here's me trying to be <laughs> nice. And we have to ruin it by me being mean. Anyways, going back to Utah, I originally said that I did not think Utah was going to contend in 2024 because I thought that Cam Rising's last year would be this year, and you cannot break. It's just really hard to break in a new quarterback when you're transitioning conferences yes. and then win the conference right away. It's, it is going to definitely be tough for Utah to do it, even with Cam coming back. And their chances, while they were raised up with Cam coming back, took a hit with Cole Bishop. Sione Vaki with actually some recent developments. I actually think there's a chance Jonah Ellis could be leaving too. That will really hurt, but there are several key pieces still back on this Utah team that has helped them go back to back as a conference champion that helped them have one of the better defenses in college football before injuries that injuries were bad throughout the season. The amount of guys they were down against a team like an Arizona, that Arizona score was really, dis- I mean, Utah was down their yeah. top three, two, three, their top four defensive players. I could argue all of them were either injured or out the game or sick and just not themselves in that game. You can clearly see that out there. And I know you like that, Technically, someone could be like, that's an excuse, but I'm sorry. But if you're down your top four defensive players, basically, that's a pretty valid thing. And that's one of the reasons the Arizona score was really lopsided. But this is a Utah team that is always going to continue to run the ball well. And when you have an experienced quarterback like Cam Rising, Cam Rising is never going to be a guy who tops pops up on ESPN every week because he throws this unreal pass. But what he does is he wins and he steps up in the biggest moments. And that's something that has to matter to me. And that is why I do think Utah has a really good chance to win the Big 12 in 2024. We already know this team plays good defense and they run the ball with cam rising back they have a quarterback that's capable of at least going toe-to-toe with some of the other elite signal callers in conference because he only did it twice against caleb williams which does have to matter jt this this utah program on the whole obviously great and and and, thank you here i go you're welcome and kyle (laughs) whittingham one of the most underrated coaches in college football my question it, it kind of goes into what you talked about about breaking in a new quarterback i know that utah yeah. doesn't have to do that breaking in a new quarterback in a new conference you're gonna have to break in certain players at certain positions in a new conference this is going to be new yeah. it's going to be different is there something about that that makes you think ah you know what there's gonna be an adjustment period where it's just tough to win the entire thing in year one in a brand new league I think there definitely can be an adjustment period you're just you know a difference maybe style of defensive lineman 
all of that will matter. I think the one thing that also really will help Utah in this transition is just how good the Pac-12 was this past season, right? Like the yeah. best season they've had in a long time where you did play a lot of elite top five teams. There were a lot of teams that, I mean, even Utah's schedule on paper right now, Utah's, I'm not trying to shade the Big 12 at all by saying this, but on paper right now, Utah's schedule last year should be harder than what they encountered this year because you don't play Oregon and Washington. I, I, I'm not trying to, you give me that sad look. I'm not trying to shade the Big 12. I'm not trying to. I'm just saying simply the fact that Utah ended up playing two teams that were very yeah. much in the thick of the national championship game and a guy who had already won a Heisman at that point too. But either way, yeah, there are some positions. Look, this is where it probably helps that Utah this past year, they broke in their freshman left tackle and he'll be playing right yeah. tackle in the bowl game. So what exactly that means, I don't even know. But yes, there are still positions where it could be a slight concern, but quarterback is just, I mean, it's the position in honestly all of sports so many ways. I think that's yeah. one of the biggest reasons I think that the quarterback spot is the exception to me rather than like, oh, okay, because the other sports have other guys out there, right? Like, yeah, Utah's lost a couple receivers now, but it's like you're going to have a couple tight ends are already coming back. We hope one of those is Brant Keithy as well, for sure, which would make a huge difference yeah. for Cam Rising. So I know that there's at least some familiarity in that position. Same thing with the running back. Same thing with some of the offensive linemen. There will be some familiarity there, and it will be tough for the – will, there will be some growing pains breaking those new types of players in, but everyone in the conference is breaking a new type of player in. I just think it's a huge advantage to not have it be your quarterback because we've saw so many games won and lost by that position this past season. Literally, UCLA went into – Salt Lake City, and they only allowed the Utah offense to score one touchdown. Why did Utah win 14 to 7? Because the very first play, Dante Moore threw a pick six. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this schedule, four of the nine Big 12 teams you get, really, really, four of the 10, because Baylor's also in there, made a bowl game. Six mm -hmm. of them did not. This is a pretty favorable 2024. Part of that being you still get to play Colorado and Arizona State, who are, are question marks truly going into next season. They are. Are you excited about Does this schedule give you an inkling that Utah can run the table next year? Uh, run, yeah, I definitely think they have a chance to go to that. I don't think Utah is going to go undefeated by any means like that, but I definitely think this is a Utah team that is has the potential to. This is a pretty good schedule. I mean, this is a good pretty, this is there's easy. There's a world where Utah could go undefeated. I don't ever want to predict a team to go undefeated because it's just so hard to do in conference play. And, yeah. you know, especially against all these new opponents, I think that could be tough too. But we've seen many a times before Oklahoma State did it this year, right? Where you suffer multiple losses in conference and you still make the conference championship game. I think that's possible for. Utah they could only lose one game once again very unlikely they lose zero because that's just really hard to do in college football yeah, in general yeah. but it's a favorable schedule and I, I am excited too because of the new opponents the new rivalries that are going to start like the new storylines and like we'll look back and go oh remember the first time that Utah played Texas Tech as part of the Big 12 you know we saw a little bit of that start with Baylor this past year right where you have Bryson Barnes gets benched and then Nate Johnson yep. comes in and has his best moment as a you shout out Nate Johnson just committed to Vanderbilt that transfer portal can be a wild place but wow. continuing with this this current utah team i do think that they have a chance to be really good in the big 12 part of it is that schedule too and yeah. uh and I, you know, you mentioned Colorado. That's one. I don't think that I don't expect that offensive line to make a monster leap, but I just got done talking about how important the quarterback position is. I don't think Shador Sanders is leaving. And I think he's going to come back and he could very well be one of the candidates for the Heisman trophy next year. So they're definitely a team I'm looking to watch out for too. There's, but there's a number of teams that I think are going to be fun. I'm just excited to see Utah yep. see face these teams. One of them definitely being BYU again. How can you not love the rivalry? And Utah is certainly going to lose to BYU. This <laughs> is Locked On Big 12 and Locked On Utes Crossover, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Talent Solutions. LinkedIn Talent Solutions is where I go every time I need to make a hire, which is pretty often, actually. I hire a, an intern every semester, usually from Baylor University, which is in my backyard. But this year, Baylor's not doing interns next semester. So what do I have to do? I got to go find them on LinkedIn Talent Solutions, which is actually pretty easy because you can go to purple hashtag hiring frame, add your listing. And it's not just another job board. This has over a billion professionals. And 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. They make this process easy and even help you write your descriptions. Launch that new feature that writes them for you effectively. So you, well, what do you even do? And you just go in, you put it in, and bam, candidates immediately post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That is LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Keep in mind that terms and conditions do apply. 
All right, JT. Look, it's if you can be picky about vernacular from Kyle Whittingham, you can be picky about what Utah fans say about BYU. It is a rivalry and picky about how some of them feel about the revived form of this rivalry. Is Utah, as it's written, is Utah scared of this rivalry or even just scared of BYU? They're not scared. I will say you, and you know, Drake, you did enrage me, man. As soon as you said that to tease that last segment, that BYU was going to beat Utah. I, you can't see behind me. Mm. I just tore up. I tore up my entire house. I mean, I yes. just could not believe that's the type of person I am that that's Holes how mad that statement makes me. I, it's exactly. I just throw it. I'm like a Seahawks fan when my team lost the Super Bowl. I broke my TV with the remote oh, basically, but no, I look, are there some fans that I'm sure are me? I don't think scared is the right word. Right. But are there I, I don't think scared that, is the right word. It's, it's yeah. poppy, but it's, it's, the, I like the question. I know built. actually, I yeah. do like the question. Um, I, cause I do think there's some fans that are, I've heard before, like, Oh, BYU fans are just so toxic, which the truth is there's fans on both sides, just like in every yeah. single yeah. fandom yeah. in any sport or even like just topic in general, people in any argument, there's going to be people on both sides who are toxic. Like, yeah, it's going to get like that a little bit, but overall it's so much fun. The trash talk, all of it. Mm-hmm. I love it. I was bummed that these teams couldn't play each other in the past two seasons. And I'm so excited to have the rivalry renewed. As you said, look, BYU, you got Utah the last time they played. So how can I not be fired up for the opportunity, especially because since we've seen BYU, we've gone on to win back-to-back Pac-12 championships. And one of those losses, and even the loss we had against BYU, that was was a weird loss because it was before this team really discovered who they were with Cam Rising. So Charlie Brewer. Had they, yeah, 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 good old Charlie Brewer. You know him well. Um, had, they played, had they played at the end of the season that year, I mean, Utah finished finished ranked higher, mm-hmm. of course, and there's a good reason to believe that Utah could have very well beaten BYU again. Obviously, I would feel that way because of how they looked at the end of the season and them being yep. ranked higher. I think a lot of people would feel that way. But the BYU did beat them head-to-head, so give a lot of credit to the Cougars for that. And I'm excited to have that rivalry back. I think it's definitely an underrated rivalry that because it hasn't been present and because they haven't been in the same conference, hasn't gotten the shine that it should have yep. i'm you know you've seen it on espn too just kind of thrown to the side as a late night game where we know that no one watches a lot of those 10 30 games especially as we're closer to the east coast now um yeah. and those late games like that are brutal i think there's an opportunity to really maybe not even have it at the end of the season as much as i think it'd be fun to have a rivalry weekend maybe throw it in another time try to make something of it get some excitement and hype going around it i'm i'm fired up that this is back i think it's great for both fan bases and there's something special about it i scared it's not the right word and yeah. but but I used it strategically because I've seen once again the reason that I want to do this I've had so many Utah fans in the comments or on Twitter that just say things and I was like all right fine let's address some of this and there seems to be this sect of of Utah fans just don't want to play BYU for whatever reason and I don't think scared is the right word but it's almost the way that I view it at this point because why why are there some Utah fans that shy away from this rivalry. Some of the toxic, 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 I think I used it enough, fans, I think literally think that my school is better than your school, which is a ridiculous form of thinking. We can change. Yes. If your school beats that school head to head like that, like, yep, we're a better football team than you. But don't for a second be like, oh, our players are better in terms of like the person than that. Yeah. I, that, yeah. that stuff is ridiculous to me. And I think that's what some I think that's what people who say that stuff. I think that's what they think. I think that's asinine. I, I don't like that kind of crap. But anyways, I do think that this is a, such a scenario where it's just awesome that we have these two programs playing each other again. Kyle Whittingham and Kalani Sok- Sataki coach together like they know each each other really well and this is a good they, they have a lot of respect for each other as we should have a lot of res- utah and byu fans should right. have I mean, a lot Kyle Whittingham is a byu fan at heart so of course yeah, he, i don't know if he is anymore but you're right he did you know at one point that was at obviously one very point. Dear. and i think and i think that he does when he plays them he understands the rivalry takes it seriously but there's a yeah. reason the two the two teams do still end up shaking hands at the end of the game they don't just run in the locker room the players respect each other on each side utah and byu compete for everything recruiting wise now too they're both trying to land the top in-state recruits they always were but it's in a new level now when you're in the conference because there are direct consequences when you do not land the best player because you will see him later yeah. on for sure so i think all of those amp up the stakes and make it just a really exciting thing then there's so many classic moments of this rivalry i can't wait to have it renewed the the fun trash talk is what makes it great my first ever experience attending this game was i traveled to byu when utah lost that game and it was you know obviously you're bummed your team lost but it was funny like you know you get fans yelling at you like that and you know we're like oh we won the last nine and all that and you're like you know there's no real good comeback when your team just lost but that's what you're gonna say of course so like fun moments like that like that's what i love about the sport like your team 
team isn't always going to win, but your team's your team still will win. So you got you can enjoy the moments when you win and when you lose. Eh, it is what it is. You got to deal with it. But it's just those fun memories and moments that come from rivalry games that there's nothing like a collegiate rival. Utah and BYU are each other's rival, and we're yeah. going to be getting a lot more of them playing each other, which I think is a great thing. All right. Before we close, I'm going to ask this in the most unbiased, objective way possible. <laughs> Is and the answer seems obvious. Is Utah football in a better position than BYU right now? And if so, how large is the gap? Ooh, how large is the gap? Is because I definitely think the answer to that is yes. They have won. Obviously, Utah's been in the conference. BYU is not. But we did just see. It just takes a lo- it takes time to get up that level. BYU saw that this year as well. I think you see this Utah team that's won back to back conference championships. Utah recruiting has been at a higher level in the past. The quality of transfers that Utah have landed have been higher. Utah has continued to win some of these big games like that. Versus BYU has had some tough losses. And yeah, I mentioned that Utah did have that tough loss to Arizona, but I mentioned all those injuries for a reason as well. Yep. I just think that's a kind of a, a deceptive oh, and loss. BYU had some tough losses down the stretch too. Be exactly. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And I know there was some injuries for them as well. And I feel for that, but it just takes time to get up to this level, like credit them for being able to beat Utah when they did. But there's a reason that Utah dominated that rivalry before. That's not even being biased. It's just straight up the fact when you look at who had won the several games before it was Utah for a reason. I do believe Utah is in a better position. I will obviously pick Utah when they play BYU this year and for years moving forward until I see BYU on a conference level. Well, I'm not being honest. I'll probably always be yeah. Utah. But I mean, on a conference contending level, which yeah. we don't think of them as that right now. Could they get up to that point eventually? I think there's a chance, but I don't see them as that right now. Utah is better as long as Kyle Whittingham is there, which who knows how long that will be. I'll be honest. BYU will be second fiddle for Utah in terms of how we preview these games because that's what it's been for the majority of the time while Kyle Whittingham has been at Utah and Utah has simply been better over the past few seasons. I can't can't remember the last time that and I'm not even trying to shade BYU, but please tell me genuinely, when's the last time at the end of the season that BYU finished ranked higher than Utah? It's been a long time, Drake. Yeah, there it is. I mean, yeah, look, like I said, I feel like the answer is objective for where the two programs are right now. It'll be interesting to see them on the same on the level playing field, both in the Big 12, because then you can't argue it. Then there are actual standings. There are head, there's the head to head matchup. It's all going to play into this matchup, hopefully for years to come. JT, for those locked on Big 12 listeners that like your work, want to find more of it, where can they go? Yeah, make sure you guys head over to Locked On You. So I'm sure you Locked On Cougars fans are going to be uh, flooding yes. flooding that with some negative comments now. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, Locked On Utes on X as well. And my personal handle at JT Wistersill. But uh, Drake, always enjoy joining you, man. I think you do a great job. Pleasure. Thank you, JT. For those listening, thanks for making Locked On Big 12 and Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. Come back the rest of this week. Transfer Portal, bowl games, all kinds of jazz going on for both of these shows at Locked On. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Dos grande.